In this video tutorial, we are going to be using a program called SketchUp to create a 3D model of our names. Now, SketchUp is a free online piece of software that can be used to create all sorts of different 3D models. And as I said today, we're going to be starting very, very simple and just learning a few of the basic tools to write our names in three dimensions. Okay, so as you can see, my name is Tim and I've got my name written in 3D block letters. That's all we need to do today. It's quite a simple tutorial. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is you need to jump online and load up the free version of SketchUp. Your teacher should show you how to do that exactly. You will need a Google account before you actually get into SketchUp. Okay, once you've got your Google account, you can sign in and you should end up with a page looking like this when you load into the free version of SketchUp. Now the habit that I want you to get into before you start anything in SketchUp, you must go up to the top left corner and click on the hamburger menu. So there's three little lines. Now it might pause for a second while it loads, but when you click on that menu, you need to go down to New Model and select the Simple Template Millimeters. Okay, now nothing will change when you select that. Your screen still looks the same, but what has changed is your measurements. Okay, because SketchUp is from an American company, it starts the program using feet and inches. And we don't use measurements like that in Australia, okay? We use uh, centimeters, millimeters, meters, and whatnot. So we want to use the millimeter template so that our measurements that will come into this box later on will be something that we understand. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to click on this chick in the middle of the page. We don't need her there. Just press delete on your keyboard and she will disappear. And all that you're going to be left with on the page are these three colored lines. So what are these three colored lines exactly? Well, they are your three axes on the page. We've got the blue line, blue line, which is the Y axis, the red line, which is the X axis, and the green line, which is the Z axis. And they are the three different dimensions we use in 3D modeling. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to do to get started, okay, is pop on over to this little panel of tools that you see on the right hand side of the page and work your way down to the one that says views when you hover over the top of it. It's got a little play button inside a square there. It looks like a little um, movie clapper thing that movie directors use. Okay, when you click on it, you'll see a panel slide out and it's your views panel. And you've got nine different options here that you can click on and you can get different views of your models as you're uh, working through your projects. Okay, so you've got front views, you've got top views, you've got side views and back views, all sorts of different views. The one we want to start with today is the front view. So just click on this house with a little chimney and it will change the look of your screen. What we're doing now is we're looking front on or straight on at our project. We're standing directly in front of it. Okay, so we can see the Y axis and the X axis. We just can't see that Z axis, which runs off towards the horizon in the distance. Okay, now the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing our name in 2D. So the tool that we're going to use to draw our name in 2D is the line tool. So it's just this little pencil over here. So go to your toolbox, the fourth tool down, select the line tool. Now I want everyone to start today. I want you drawing your names from this center point. It's called the origin and that's where the three axis meet. It's always a good starting point. You don't have to start there. Okay, you could be drawing up here or over the left or somewhere down the bottom, but I like to start in the axis or the origin, not the axis, the origin. So I'm going to click my mouse once. When I click my mouse once, you'll see that a line is following my mouse cursor. Okay, we've got the starting point for our first line. But where do we want the next point to end? So the first letter in my name is the letter T. So I'm going to draw the base of the letter T. So I've started on the origin, I've clicked once, and I'm going to come across to the right, and I'm going to click again. I'm then going to go up, because the line is still connected here, and I'm going to click again. And I'm going to click, 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 and click. There we go. That is a wonky T. Okay, I don't want you to stress if you do make a mistake like that where it's a little bit off. Okay, it's fine. We're just learning the basics of SketchUp for now. And as long as you can do a shape that looks somewhat like the letter in your name, then I'm going to be happy. If you've got tricky letters in your name, like the letter C where it's curved, maybe the letter U or G, okay, just use straight lines today. Use block letters. Just to give you an example, the letter C could be done 
like this. I'm just clicking my way around. That could be how you do the letter C. Don't worry about the curves in the name. Okay, so I'll just delete that. Now if you make a mistake and want to change it, so I have made this a little bit too long over here, you can press Control Z to undo. Okay, it will take you back a few steps and you might want to try and fix that up. Let me see how this one's going to look, probably not much better, but it will do. Okay, so there's my letter T. The next letter in my name is the letter I. Now that's a simple one, it's just a rectangle, so I can just go straight down, straight back up and connect those lines. The letter M is my last letter, bit of a tricky one. Let's see how we go. You see little dashed lines appearing and pink lines appearing as well. They're just guides to help you out as you're drawing your name. Okay, bit of a um, wonky top to this M, but it'll do. So there's my name, all drawn in 2D. Now one thing you need to be aware of, I see a lot of um, students have this issue. When they are drawing their letters, let's do a tricky letter like the letter R. Remember, it's just going to be something like this. Now I'm just going to do the little inside piece as well. There we go. Now something you might have noticed here is that the letter R did not fill in. Like all my letters over here are white and they're all filled in. The little circle inside the R is filled in. The reason that the rest of the R is not filled in is because the lines haven't been properly connected. Okay, you can't turn a shape into 3D without there being enclosed lines. All the lines must be connected. So you can see down the bottom, I purposely left a little gap here to show you that. But when I connect that gap up, the shape turns white to show me that all those lines around the outside are now connected. Sometimes the shape goes blue. I'm not sure why yet. But if you've got a blue shape or a white shape, then you should be good to make your name into 3D. Now one thing here that you can do with the R in particular, a few letters like this, like the letter B will have the same issue, or P's. You've got to get rid of this inside section. So you just click on it with your white arrow and select it and press delete on your keyboard. And that just cuts a hole out of your letter and you can then turn that to 3D in a moment. All right, so I'm just going to delete that R because that's not part of my name. And I'm going to go back over here to my name, Tim. I'm going to go back to my views here and choose the front view again. Actually, I'm a little bit off center, so I'm going to move it across. Now, that's another thing. I want to show you how to move around the page properly. Now, if you've got a mouse plugged into your computer, you're going to find life very easy compared to somebody who does not have a mouse plugged into their computer. If you've got a mouse plugged in your computer, you can orbit around your name and have a look at it in three dimensions by simply holding down the little mouse wheel and moving your mouse around. And you can see... You can look around the front and back, underneath your name, look down on top of it. And you can see that at the moment it's just a bunch of 2D shapes or 2D letters. There's no third dimension that runs along that Z or green axis. They only run along two dimensions, which is the Y axis, the blue line, and the red line, the X axis. <laughs> okay. If you don't have a mouse and you're just using a trackpad on your laptop, it's very difficult, but you can go down the bottom here to this very last tool in your left hand toolbox and choose this first option, the orbit tool. Okay, and that's the same thing. You can just click and drag around and look around the front and back and whatnot of your name. Alright, the other thing you might want to get used to as well is this hand tool. Oh, sorry, the pan tool. It looks like a little hand. It moves, just moves you left and right or up and down. It doesn't let you orbit around your name, but it just moves your a model on the screen. All right. You can do that using your mouse by holding shift and the mouse wheel. Okay, and that will let you pan around the page as well. All right, so that's for those guys with a mouse. The other thing you want to do is zoom in and out. With a mouse, you simply scroll up and down with the mouse wheel. For those using trackpads, it's quite difficult. You'll need to use these two magnifying glasses. Okay, they allow you to zoom in and out. All right, see that last one as well you could use, but I just use one of these two magnifying glasses. All right, 
So what I want you to do now is zoom back a little bit and I want you to orbit around so that your name is sort of side on, something like that. We're looking at it from a diagonal kind of view. If you want to go to your views panel, you could choose one of these bottom two houses here. That's not a bad view there. All right. What we're going to do is turn our model from 2D to 3D by simply grabbing this push pull tool over here in our left hand toolbox. It looks like a little square with an arrow pointing up on it. Okay. With the push pull tool, this allows us to extrude our letters and make them 3D. So with an enclosed shape, so you remember your shape has to be white or sometimes colored in blue, you can hover over them and you can see that they are ready to be clicked on and you can pull it out or push it away from you and it's going to make it 3D. It extrudes the shape. Remember the word extrude. So I'm just going to pull it out towards me a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to cross to the next letter and do the same thing. Try and roughly guess the same um, size extrusion. Yeah, they're not quite the same size, but they're close enough. Okay, remember we're not looking for accuracy as such in this tutorial. It's just getting you used to the different tools. Okay, so that's how you make your name 3D. You can see that it's now running along this Z axis, the green line, and it's made our shape 3D. You can pick it up again and pull it out further or push it away further. It's up to you. Okay, but I'm just going to keep it Pretty simple for now, like so. Alright, so we've got our name in 3D. The last thing I want to do is I want to colour it in. I think white's a bit boring. You can actually create quite detailed models by adding a bit of colour um, or a texture to your designs. So, on your left-hand toolbox, you've got this little bucket here. It's the paint bucket tool. Just select that. And you'll see that your materials menu flies out from the right hand side. If you want to access the materials men menu quickly, just click this cube here with a little checkerboard on the front of it. And it gives you a few colours here that are quite boring that you can use to colour in your name. Or click on this magnifying glass here with the bricks under it. And it gives you a whole heap more options. Okay. You can go simple and choose colours to start with and use colors to color in your name. That's what I did on my example. Okay, I just used some pinks and yellows and blues there. Or if you would like, you can choose some textures, so some proper materials. Let's go down and have a look at what we've got. Metals, patterns, roofing, all sorts of stuff. Uh, let's go to landscape, fencing and vegetation. I know they've got some cool things. You can see we've got grasses, fences, we've got different types of pavers and bricks. Lots of things we can use to colour in our models. So, um, I'm going to grab my white arrow now. And if you double click, say on the letter M here, it selects the front face of your shape. And you could colour in that front face, say green with grass. But it doesn't colour in the rest of the letter, so that's an issue. I want to colour in the whole letter with the same material. So what I need to do is actually triple click my mouse, so one, two, three, and it selects the entire shape. And you can see that with the blue outline around the edges of the shape and the little blue dots in the middle. That means that shape is fully selected. So I can now go and grab my green grass, click anywhere on this shape, and it will color the entire thing in with grass. Okay, it looks good. I'll go and grab my white arrow now, and I'm going to triple click on the letter I. Just make sure that every side is selected there so that the blue lines go all around the edges. And I might grab some pavers here and click on the letter I. And you see now we've got a bit of detail in the I. And I'll do the same for the T. Triple click on the T. Uh, let's get out of the landscaping one. Let's go to another one. This glass and mirrors got anything good? No, I don't think these look too flush. No, they look a bit crap. Let's go to carpets and stuff. We've got some funky looking things. There we go. We put this old retro carpet on the letter T. So have a play around with the different textures and colours and things there and see if you can colour in your name with some cool ideas. When you are done, you should have something looking like that. I want you to hit the save button up the top and it will tell you to save it. A little fly out menu will appear. We'll click on SketchUp and you just need to give it a name. I'm going to save over the top of one of my old projects here. And that's going to save into the cloud. It doesn't actually save onto your computer as such. 
it saves into the cloud so you can access this from any computer anywhere in the world okay you just need internet connection to get to it and that's saved so next time you load SketchUp you can always open that back up okay so that's all I'm going to show you for this tutorial a few things that you learned remember you learned how to use the line tool to draw straight lines you had a look at the push pull tool here which allowed you to extrude your letters to make them 3d you used the orbit tool the pan tool and the zoom tool to get different views of your 3d model you also had a look at the materials menu over here to add some color to your design and you also had a look at this views option that allowed you to have different views of your name or of your model as such okay you got side views top views front views got the diagonal views there whatever they're called Alrighty, so you've learned quite a few of the basic tools in SketchUp already, and you're going to be using those tools in basically every single design that you work on. Okay, so I'll catch you in the next video where we're going to make things a little bit more tricky.